Are you struggling with the CPA exam because your course failed to fit your learning style? I'm Darius Clark of I-75 CPA Review, where the right teacher makes all the difference. All right, here's a BEC economics sim on monetary and fiscal policy. The government can make a move to impact the economy by means of monetary policy or fiscal policy. And the exam will ask whether the move relates to monetary or fiscal policy and if the move is meant to expand the economy or to contract the economy. Let's start by reviewing what we know about monetary policy. With monetary policy, the Federal Reserve has three aces in their hand. They could lower or raise the discount rate. That's the rate that the Federal Reserve charges member banks for overnight lending, quick loans. Lowering the discount rate actually increases the money supply, and that's seen as expanding the economy. So one of the aces in the hand of the Federal Reserve is the discount rate. There's another one that has to do with the reserve ratio, and the Federal Reserve could lower or raise the reserve ratio. Once again, lowering something would increase the money supply. Lowering the reserve ratio allows a greater percentage of bank funds to be loaned out, whereas raising the reserve ratio would force bank funds to be shut in so raising the reserve ratio will be seen as contractionary. Lowering the ratio would be seen as expansionary, just like lowering the overnight discount rate would be seen as expansionary. Raising that discount rate would be seen as contractionary. And then the third ace in the hand of the Federal Reserve when it comes to monetary policy is what we call open market operations buying or selling U.S. Treasury bonds while the bond market is open. If the Federal Reserve comes into the bond market like any other customer and buys U.S. Treasuries, that means they spend their cash in the bond market and more cash goes into the system and that would be seen as increasing the money supply. On the other hand, if the U.S. Treasury comes in when the bond market's open and sells U.S. Treasuries, they take cash out of the system and that's seen as contractionary that would decrease the money supply. So when it comes to monetary policy, know the three aces in the hand of the Federal Reserve and how they impact the money supply. So monetary policy, all about the Federal Reserve and which one of the aces they play. Fiscal policy is a whole different story because fiscal policy has to do with Congress. Congress can vote to raise taxes. They can vote to reduce taxes. If Congress votes to raise taxes, that's contractionary fiscal policy. What is raising taxes likely to do to economic activity? It's going to slow down the economy because people have less money to spend. But what if Congress reduces taxes? That is expansionary fiscal policy. That's meant to speed up the economy, to give it a boost, give people more money to spend. Congress could also pass a budget that increases government spending, and that's seen as expansionary fiscal policy because more money is being spent. So Congress passing a budget that increases government spending, that's seen as speeding up the economy. And Congress would do that to keep recession from happening. Or Congress could pass a budget that decreases government spending, but they would only do that if they thought the economy was running too hot because that would contract the economy and we call that contractionary fiscal policy. So anything Congress does is fiscal policy. If they raise taxes, that's contractionary. If they reduce taxes, that's expansionary. Congress spends more money in the government budget, that's expansionary. If they decrease government spending, that's contractionary. They would do that because they were afraid of inflation. So that's our review. Now let's start the sim. The facts are the government can make a move to impact the economy by means of monetary or fiscal policy. For each item, indicate whether the move relates to monetary policy or fiscal policy and indicate if the move is expansionary or contractionary for the economy or choose none of these. So if you read one of these items and you don't think it's expansionary, you don't think it's contractionary, you don't think it's monetary policy or fiscal policy, then you'll choose the last one, none of these. Let's look at the first one. Federal Reserve purchases U.S. Treasury bonds during open market operations. That means while the bond market's open. And the bond market's open Monday through Friday unless it's a national holiday. 
most of the morning and until the late afternoon. So if the Federal Reserve is buying U.S. Treasuries, what are they leaving behind? They're leaving behind their cash because the Federal Reserve is just another customer in the bond market. They can't just take the bonds and run. They have to buy the bonds with cash. So they'll leave their cash behind and their cash adds to the money supply. So that would be expansionary monetary policy. And the answer to number one would be expansionary monetary policy. If the Fed purchased bonds with their cash, that cash would now be in the money supply. This would be seen as expansionary monetary policy, and this move would be done to stimulate the economy because the Federal Reserve must think that it needs a little boost. Number two, the Federal Reserve lowers the discount rate from 5% to 4%. That is also expansionary monetary policy. The Fed takes a different one of their three aces out of their hand and plays the discount rate card. By lowering the rate, it makes it easier and cheaper for member banks to borrow from the Federal Reserve. And as a result, these banks will now have more money to lend and that will stimulate the economy. Number three, the Federal Reserve raises the reserve requirements of banks from 10% of deposits to 16% of deposits. All right, here's the Federal Reserve playing a different card now. They're raising the reserve requirements from 10% to 16%. And by doing that, banks are going to have to shut more money in. More money is going to stay behind and can't be loaned out. This would decrease the money supply. Contractionary monetary policy. Now, they'll tell you maybe on the exam that the average funds on deposit at the time were $20 million dollars. When the Fed decided to raise the reserve requirement from 10% to 16%, and the exam could ask you a question with calculations and say, what does that do to the money multiplier? For this question, it was enough to know that it's just contractionary monetary policy to raise the reserve requirement. But if you got one of these questions where they told you $20 million was the average funds on deposit, and the Fed came along and raised the reserve requirement from 10% to 16%, they would ask you, how much would that impact the money supply? Or what would the money multiplier effect be of that? And the answer would be, you would take $20 million, the average funds on deposit, divide by the old reserve requirement of 10%, and you can see that $200 million, that was the amount available for banks to loan out. But now, with the reserve requirement going up to 16%, you can see that only $125 million is available to be loaned out. So the money multiplier effect decreases by $75 million. There's that much less now available in the economy. And this will be done to slow down the economy if the Fed fears inflation. All right, how about this? A new tax law takes effect that raises taxes on most Americans with no change in government spending. Is that monetary policy or fiscal policy? Is it expansionary? Or contractionary now, if you think you know leave me the answer in the comments section and don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps the channel out a lot and if you need more help with economics or any other part of the BEC exam go to cpaexamtutoring.com and get yourself on I-75 where the right teacher makes all the difference